Hi. Good evening. Welcome. Um, let me just change here. Speakers. Yeah, perfect. So the VMs are running. Um, and it seems the stream is not running. Um, yep. Perfect. Oh. Anyway, so in the last stream, uh, we got we have we already had the injector running so it can launch firefox and it can uh, inject the library then we were looking into the library and we uh, needs found out that we need to hook the create process w function uh, in order to be able to inject the library in child processes from Firefox, forked processes. So the easiest way to do that is by using um, export, no, import table hooks. So to do that, the first thing we need is to get a handle to the kernel. No, thirty-two module. I just want to check here something on there to see if to keep the, the same naming convention. We're gonna have to parse the um, the image file, the um, P image, portable executable image, um, because there's no easy way to access uh, the import table of a, a module, or in this case of an executable, the Firefox module. A Firefox executable um, with an API you have to do it manually so that's what we're gonna do and looking at this this is not what I want what I want is the current executable module so Call it Firefox. Just move here some cables that are on the way. So let's call it Firefox. And if I remember correctly, the get module handle function. If there's no module uh, specified, so if the module is null. Then it will return the current 
module handle, which is the library. So, not what we want. We want the the Firefox. We want the handle to the process. We want the base address. Not not even an handle. We want the base address, right? Search get process base address windows stack overflow to the rescue. Is the other space of a process locate IT inject the DLL create remote thread. Oh, by the way, this is the process that we used to inject the DLL with the create remote process. Now it's gonna explain the portable executable file format. Okay. Oh no. According to null gives you the base address. Ah, I was right. So I can just do this and it should be okay. Get module handle. Okay, so this should return. I'm just gonna double check. By the way, this is no longer called uh, MSDN, but uh, Google still returns the right results, so. Okay, so you can see here, returns a handle to the file used to create the calling process. So that's what we want. Mm, okay. So we have an handle to the Firefox. Basically, this is the... It will be a pointer to memory where the Firefox process is. Sync. No. I am not sure if the definitions of the... let's see.
yeah the definitions are there so uh, I don't need to go and define them on an external uh, header um, they are already there so that's all good so yep let's start so this is the DOS header and it's gonna be it's gonna be equal to the image DOS header so we have to cast it from the Firefox handle so what we can actually do uh, no, I might need this for some pointer calculations. Will I need this for pointer calculations? I'm not sure if I'm gonna need this variable. Uh, let's assume for now that I won't need it. So let's just assume for now it's not gonna be needed. So now we have the DOS header, and one of the things we need to check is uh, if the um, first if it's not null. Or we need to check as well if the DOS header. And if I correct it, we need to check this value, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think so. Yep, we need to check the. Image dash signature. And if it is, we return false. Which is going to be actually what is expected here so the startup method I'm going to do is boolean result equals true by default it always returns true and then we say here I'll startup why am I doing this? Because if there is an error in the startup function, if we return false during uh, DLL process attached during this, uh, this stage of the DLL uh, loading, Windows will automatically unload the DLL afterwards. So it gives you gives us an indication um, as well if the DLL successfully loaded or not. Uh, instead of just staying in memory without any whatsoever indication of what happened. So next step. So now that we validated that the header, we need to get the um, empty header. So image empty. I'm gonna specifically. I'm not sure if I should be specific on my on the bits. I should use the 32 or 64 or, or if I should use the generic since we yeah I'll, I'll use the generic because we have to compile it uh, with the right uh, bits if you want to know more about like about the anti headers you can always uh, google search I'm not gonna be diving too much into it I'll just do the bare minimum explanation uh, but in a nutshell, is based every single executable file has a format. In Windows, they have the P uh, format, which means portable executable format. 
which is composed of various headers. One of them is the DOS header, so it's the, the basic head, header that comes from early beginnings in, in Windows. It was even, uh, it's, as the name says, DOS comes from the DOS operating system, Microsoft DOS. And then you have the anti-headers, which was the added afterwards um, on NT, Windows NT. Um, and that's what nowadays is used on Windows XP and uh, uh, from, in, uh, no, actually from Windows NT something. But then there was Windows 98 was still using, I think, a different format, if I remember correctly. Not 100% sure, but for sure in Windows XP, because the kernel from uh, Windows 98 to Windows XP changed, so they started using the, wi the Windows NT kernel on uh, Windows XP. And, and I made a mistake here, this is, should be like this. So if, if it doesn't have a valid, valid magic number, then return false. Now we need... Now we need to get the anti-header, which is going to be... Oh, sorry, this is a pointer, so which is this one and, and do we have to make no it doesn't there is a very useful macro called make pointer um, I'm just gonna confirm that this is what I want because bas basically what I want is this because the the position in memory of the anti header is given by this variable and it's an offset so it needs to be added something needs to be added to it and it's basically the pointer in memory of the process or of the library depending on what we are using in this case is of a process plus this offset um, just double check. Yeah, you can see here. But there is a very useful macro called make PTR. I seem to find it. It's not difficult to. Oh, here it is. It's not very difficult to to make it work, but basically this is for us not to have to deal with um, pointer arithmetics. And interesting enough, I'm not sure if they have the make delta as well, which is not. I cannot, why can't I find stuff on here? I want to search for stuff on it's not there. Ah, okay, it's there. Make pointer. I cannot make so many. Oh, interesting. It's actually <laughs> it's actually the same thing. Hook import function. Um, cool. Yeah, it's doing a lot more verifications, but the is bad read pointer is not really a good verification, if I remember correctly. I'm not one hundred percent sure. Why? Not remembering right now, but it's not... Anyways, let's see. I don't remember. In principle, we don't need it, but... Where did they put that thing? Yeah. 
for real? Not find it. English descriptor. This is a pretty old technique, by the way. So maybe my eyes are failing me, which is wouldn't be uncommon, but I'm not seeing where... Maybe. Let's not lose time with this one. Oh! Here it is. Yeah, clearly my eyes were failing me. So it's the cast, the pointer, and the value to add. So we're gonna come up here, and we're gonna define uh, make Pointer macro where you say cast uh, address offset and you do you convert to the cast and you do This is 64 bits, so it should have. Doesn't have a keyword. D word 64. Interesting. I would assume it has a, a keyword. Even if it's win 64, hmm. very interesting. Let me see the configuration of the project. I'm gonna add here. It's finding it, so I'm not sure if it's worthwhile. Um, let's just use it like this. Let's put it. Anyway, it doesn't hurt, I think. So let's do this. Oh my god, why is it so slow? So this goes into 32. Sure. And sign and sign and sign more. That's the thing, right? Is for us not to deal with pointer arithmetic, so we convert it to a x of x uh, to a number, and we do the math. So, so 
exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna convert it. And I'm gonna use the D word 64 and that's it. That's D word 64. And then it's basically the address plus Viewer 64 and the offset. Right. And that's it. Yep, that's it. So the easiest way now to use this macro we can just do make pointer we say does header and the new header okay. now we need to do some checks so if so we cannot check if the anti header is null because it's not is never it will never be null because the dos header um, is null what we can do is check whether the DOS header is equal to the anti header because then it would mean that this value here was zero. But this is unlikely to happen in a normal situation. It would be maybe some countermeasures or something, but this would is unlikely to happen. So let's just be lazy for now. And check the signature. and then it's the same thing we return false so let's look at the many sources so they do the same thing yeah. it's interesting because they are dereferencing the pointers I don't think I need to do that see this PC mag article if they do it I don't think they do it no they are not yeah they are not doing it just using the pointers as they are So now that we have gotten to the anti header, the anti header has various things. One of them are other headers, <laughs> like the file header and the optional header. So if you go to the optional header, you have address of entry point, base of code, data directories, DLL, characteristics, image base, all these sort of things. Um, sections as well, section alignment, all these sort of things. But one of the things that uh, we want is the data directories and there are potentially 16 data directories it's the export table the import table and a bunch more of them of course we want 
the import table. So if we do and I don't remember image. Here it is. I think this is it. So you can see here architecture, relocations, debug, exceptions, import address table, resource security, and all this sort of thing. So what we want is this one. And if I am correct, this is an offset. This points to is an offset from the base address of the image. So we have to calculate it based on the DOS header. So what I'm going to do optional header because I want to add some validations equals empty header oh we can I wanted to check the uh, it's, I was going to check the magic val uh, value of the header But I don't think I need it. So what we're gonna do... I think the address table... No, I don't think it, it does... I don't think it has a structure. Well, it does have a structure, but I don't think... I'm not sure if it is defined. Uh, let me check here. What they do? Ah, is image import descriptor. Okay. Oh yeah, and I need the virtual address. Okay. So... It's called import descriptor. So I was close but he didn't ring the bell import descriptor I'm just gonna call it imp descriptor equals make pointer and then we have to convert it to the image import descriptor the address is the DOS header And then we have to give it the offset, which is virtual address. Exactly. And we can close the macro. If the image import descript oh sorry. Descriptor equals null then return false so if you would want to break the code this code for instance you could um, I don't know set this to zero in memory so this would would always fail or uh, set this to, to zero as well or simply zero out this and then it will fail because I'm not doing many checks to see if the data is being corrupted in any way so and now that we have the import descriptor let me see what what does it contain okay so we need to uh, iterate over it um, and then check the name I think because it has a first tongue uh, original first tongue 
or chain characteristics so we need to iterate over it in some shape or form now oh, they are actually doing this check Oh, because it, it, that's a good thing. Uh, actually, it's correct. And I'm not sure if this is correct, because you are adding the DOS header and then a virtual address. So this will always uh, be false. In here, PNT header, it should actually be PDOS header. No valid pointer in the module P a header. Now go to a pointer to its import sections. Okay. So if this is zero, which is what they are saying here, if the relative virtual address of the import section is zero, doesn't exist, bail out. But they are comparing with PNT header when they should be comparing with PDOS header. So that's uh, a mistake on their part. Let me see if they are doing the same mistake. No, they are just checking. They are checking the optional header uh, magic number, which is something that I'm not doing. Start of RVA plus base address. Remember that each DLL by the function it represents by. Okay, so we need to check the name, which is yet again another relative virtual address that we need to get. Oh, that should be okay. Interesting. That's the only thing we need to do. Let me double check with this one. So what they are going to do on this one is they are checking the while the name is not is new, basically. They get the name, okay, and they do a, a comparison. Uh, case insensitive comparison and if they do find if it if it is the function that we are looking for no if it is the module that we are looking for they break and then we need to get yeah, we actually need to get to the function. So first they're gonna f try to find out. So basically, um, how the data is structured is, in the import table you have um, the module names. And, well, you have virtual addresses, relative virtual addresses to module names. And uh, relative virtual addresses to the import table of those, or to the uh, uh, functions that are imported from those modules. Um, this means that you have to iterate over that uh, initial list, so comparing every single module name. Once you find the module name that you are looking for, that you want to get the function that you, that has the function that you want to hook then you have to stop there get the the first tank value so that then you can iterate over the tanks and get the address of the function well get the address and replace Th 
this one analyzing for descriptor This is all ANSI uh, strings. There's no Unicode strings. Okay, let's do that. I like more. I like this approach more. I think I'm gonna use this approach. Let me see the other results that we have. What was the approach that we were using? Get import table, so it gets import table. Here they don't they don't show the code. Um, oh, they are not even they are ignore completely ignoring the. Interesting. In this example, they ignore the module and just they just go to every single. And they just care about the function. They don't care about... Well, it's one way to do it. But if there is a module that for any reason has the same function name, then you might get the wrong module. If you have, uh, Actually, sorry, let me rephrase. If you have two modules with different names and different purposes, but accidentally or intentionally have a function with the same name then this will uh, probably return the function that you don't want potentially can return the function that you don't want which is not really a good idea um, Here, this one, I don't care, too much text. And yeah, this looks good, huh? This article looks really good. Red team experiments. It's looking really nifty. Let's see how they do it. Yeah, they are checking the library name. They are checking the library name. Well, they are not checking the library name. They are getting the name, they are trying to load the library, then they check for the library. And then they just check the function name. Well, we could be lazy and do that. But now I'm gonna. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm gonna actually check the library name. So here we go. Uh, so we need to check the name. What I can do uh, 
I usually like to use fours. Not sure if this one would be a good idea to use a four, but let's, let's check one thing. So this is the name, and then if not, then we increase the image descriptor. So yes, wrote this wrong. It's missing an S. What descriptor? So and then if it was found okay four and then the condition, yeah, but I cannot put that condition in. No, it's easier to, it's easier to do. While found equals false um, and the import descriptor I don't know if I like this Does this uh, how how is the import descriptor terminated? We need to check how uh, the import descriptor is terminated. Windows import descriptor Windows P. Okay, it does have a new direct directory and entry, so we we can we can. Uh, this is, by the way, the iData section is exactly this. It's basically the name of the section on the file, the actual uh, on disk file, where the import descriptors are. And so it does have a null directory entry, so it's safe to do this. Which is good. And this is a D word, I assume. Yeah, so different from zero. And if it wasn't found, found equals false, 
What happened here? Did I press the wrong button? I did press the wrong button, I think. Probably pressed page down. So if it was found, then... I'll probably want to add some... Let's see. So now we need to get... We need to get the name. And it's an NC string, so yeah, it's gonna be P string module name yeah. equals make pointer from custom to P string. Then this is the DOS header, and then the offset is import descriptor name and if we do the string we compare so case okay, insensitive of the module name and kernel 32 ELL. Now, if this is equal to zero, then we know that we found uh, the DLL, right? If not, Then we do the image imp sorry imp descriptor equals make pointer yeah. image import descriptor from imp descriptor plus size of size of image import descriptor I prefer to do it like this than to do it it's also useful to explain, it helps explain them doing this. So the example on PC Mac, they are doing this. Actually, actually, this is the way to do it because it's, it's just a bunch of pointers. Oh no, no, this is a structure. Right? No, is a pointer. Is a pointer to a structure. And you are increasing only the pointer. No, it has to be done like this. This cannot be done like this, right? Now, if this is increasing only the size of the pointer, which in 64 bits is 64 bits, or if this is actually increasing the size of the structure, remember pointer arithmetics are, are really really painful sometimes um, let's see if in this other example what they do yeah they always increment we hear the same thing they will probably just increment go here and they are always incrementing okay let's 
Let's go with the flow. thinking about it we probably don't need this anyways because if it has an a new entry then we can do as the as PC Mag is doing so then does this so how can I simplify this code here This is quite safe because this if this is zero this it's okay it's just an addition so don't really care and zero and then import descriptor plus plus actually should be like this it and then we do the check so it will attribute ah no this is wrong it's not gonna work it's not going to work my friend uh, anyways trying to make a more elegant solution but let's just go with what works and that's it so if that's something something this and so if it's different from zero let me sorry I'm just checking something here because I received a notification yeah it seems okay uh, anyways, so if this is zero, if it's different from zero, it means that we found our DLL, and now if we found our DLL, what we want is to go through every single function that it has, check the function. through the address table so I'm looking for the one that matches the address we got back from get broke others above oh interesting <laughs> yeah, interesting how they do it they are comparing addresses hmm would that work yeah it would work but 
Why not compare the string? Anyways, let's just compare the string. So if this is equal to zero, meaning we didn't find our module, then it should return false. Now, what we need to do funk data. I'm gonna call it funk data anyways. It's the function data, but anyway, it really equals pointer to the image tank data, and then the address is the DOS header, and the offset is image import descriptor. First bunk. And then we need to iterate over it and it's gonna be about the same thing. So while Import by name. Okay. whether they are getting at because it's well we know that it's imported by name so address of data different from zero so oh, let's go with this address of data different from zero. Now what we want what is this? What's the name of the structure? Image import by name. Image import by name import import uh, function in function to follow the, the same nomenclature that I used above. So then I make a make pointer. So the cast is the image, the image import by name, the ad address is DOS header, and the offset is punk data, which is, this is amazing. Address of data, these names are impressive, I have to give it to Microsoft in terms of creativity. So that's our imp function imported function okay 
and then we just do the string comparison. If string. In this case, do we want to do case sensitive? Usually the functions don't change, it's only the file names, the library names that might be Windows doesn't care about case sensitivity. But the function names that are imported, they are case sensitive. They... So string compare. Now we want is the import function. Oh, please tell me this isn't a pointer. what I'm doing here differently because this is so the LT contains the name This is returning an array of one character. But this one also has much tongue content. interesting because this one goes straight into maybe it's the advantages that it goes straight he doesn't really care it just goes straight into the first tank which is the one that has the addresses probably Okay. Might not be a bad choice. But the thing is... So when it loads the process... Kernel 32 is already loaded and its imports are already resolved. Hmm. Anyways, let's see if it works. This this approach is a lot simpler. Because they are comparing comparing addresses, um, so let's try to do something. This is the original create process W, right? So let's do it 
Let's use the PC Mag approach because it's a lot simpler. Um, so let's do that. <coughs> Sorry. So let's do its approach. Uh, handle equals. You can forget about this one, potentially. We don't mind it. Do we mind iterating over all modules? I don't think I, I don't mind. It will take a little bit longer, but the process hasn't loaded that many modules, only the essential ones. Or did it? No. The thing is, it shouldn't take long. So let's just ignore this. Actually, instead of deleting it, I'm just gonna comment this code out. Handle kernel 32. And the text is kernel 32.tll If this should never happen, by the way, if it does, it's a big problem. Return uh, false. So if kernel 32 equals null, then return false. Then what we're gonna do is original create process w equals p create create process w and we do a get prop address and we pass on actually this should never happen so just do it like this Oi. Oh, nice. and then the string in the name of the get process function so this is what we want so you get the original one and instead of doing this we do like it's doing here We can just compare. So instead of doing this, and just do if func data well function. Is it the word? No, perfect. Equals this as a D word sixty four, or you can do you long long, you long long. Right, because this is the 64 bit version. Yep, so that's alright. 
So if we do this comparison, so we are comparing with the original address and if that is the case... Then what we do... is set to the new procedure otherwise we have to increase the thunk key so we can do the thunk data plus plus in here if we succeed we return true otherwise here returns false or I can just return no because if it doesn't find it I want it to return false if it returns true it means we found it so we need to change the data ul function correct equals u long long and now it needs to be the this one see if they are where are they calling it book imported function rock what is a proc int pointer um, but then it has to be converted in here to a D word, right? PD word, actually. It's actually converting. Interesting. Why would it convert? Because it's a U long long, right? So it shouldn't be a problem for me to do this. Or should it? Probably. Okay, let's try it like this. Anyways, if it fails, it fails. Okay, let's clean all copy. We seem to compile, so let's see on Windows. What does this do? Remind me, how did I do the debug? 64 this symbols I have to remember import create process create process let's toggle the breakpoint just run it let it rip Great remote thread. Uh, let me check. Following this assembler. Oh, 
I didn't see. Did I put it in the right one? Oh. We really didn't call. Oh, we did. Ah, probably I disabled the, the breakpoint. The breakpoint was already there, but I disabled it. It's likely. Okay. Um, next step. Probably the assembler. So it means that Firefox is already in, right? Firefox is already in. It's already running, so let's... <laughs> but I... But it hasn't started the, the thread. So let's attach first, let's attach to Firefox. Deep attach Firefox perfect run 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 symbols and these are the modules that are loaded so our library is not loaded there so let's get proc address maybe this one here is better get of address and this is in kernel 32 perfect so I can add a breakpoint here it's running now I'm gonna go here and I just let it run and hopefully Per, okay. Mm. This is your TLS callback. Okay, so following this assembly. Okay, I don't care about this. Assembler again. No, not my code. Here it is. Oh, here it is. Nice. Very nice. So now, if we follow the re on the return address in this assembler, this is the code of our library. Cool. So, this is the code that we are using. And hopefully I can see the graph. Yep. So this is the code that we are using to iterate and try to find and uh, change the import table of uh, create process w. So let's go through the debugger um, and see what is the behavior. See if it works. So we got the original address for the create process mm, no we still didn't because we still haven't run so yep now we have racks points to the create process w the original one so now we move on now we're gonna get the Firefox module handle, or the Firefox process handle. Uh, sorry. Return. Yep, it's pointing to Firefox. You can see here the MZ, which is the signature for the DOS uh, image adder. And we continue. Now we are doing the comparison. Yep, we did the comparison, it was okay, so check the comparison. 
Now we're gonna, this is the comparison for the image anti-header. So you can see here, PE. It was successful. Doing the validations. At some point, he needs to do this. He needs to us at some point, he needs to assign. So. Exception access violation. That's good. <laughs> Why did he do that? I was expecting it. Okay, let's have a look. Maybe we did something wrong. Well, clearly we did something wrong, but what? Is it this one that is causing problems? Let's have a look again. Yet it shouldn't cause problems because so what, I see what is going on here. Because we are not increasing, we are not incrementing the the descriptor. Be problematic, is it? Why? Why do I get this access violation? So best thing is kill Firefox. Um, let it run. Create remote thread. Touch to Firefox symbols get proc address. Make sure there's a breakpoint there. There is. Let this one run freely. What Why don't you want to run? For God's sakes. No, oh, wait. Oh, okay, 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 okay. My bad. Um, my bad, so. Ah, uh, damn it. No, I have to. It's not gonna work very well. Let's stop. 
everything. Restart. Relaunch. Entry point. Create remote thread. Because the library is not loaded yet, but Firefox should be, right? Firefox should be running. Oh, it's not yet. Why is it? Why is it so? Oh, okay. Well, let's try again. Create remote thread. There's only this one. And okay, it's not appearing as a child, but anyways, whatever. This didn't happen before, but... Okay... Didn't happen before because I didn't have the breakpoints. That's why. Anyways, doesn't matter. Now we should get a breakpoint on it. Did we? This is the TLS callbacks, callback, get broker address, and that's it. So if we follow in this assembler, we should be there. Okay, let's just run it. MC check. And checking the P header. Uh, can I see the graph? Okay. No. Can I see the graph now? See the graph. Oh, okay. So, where am I? Well, that's it. So, you should go here. But this is not either pro, don't forget that. Uh, I was thinking if I could put here a structure, probably I can put nothing here. Maybe in here. Does it accept structure offsets? Like either pro, where you can put the structure, it makes it easier to read the code. Anyways. But see here, this is our iteration. So it's gonna jump down to the first one. Yeah, this is an access violation straight up. Straight up. Like the first instruction from Sorry, the first instruction is straight up, and I think is when I'm trying to do this, maybe. Because I get the RBP, and then I'm trying to get the racks, 
Rex is what? something here that's not quite right because if it's not equal to this then it jumps onto the loop and starts the loop again right so you compare am I doing wrong here? What am I doing wrong? Here I'm at, I think I know what it is. Because here is basically, sorry, is basically this area here right so it's loading the address for our detour or hook uh, da -da. then it gets the keyword this didn't happen right this jumped over because they were different they were different so it jumped over it then added eight which is the size of a pointer checking this and that's when it's getting no it can't be Because he never did the comparison, he jumped straight up. He never never did the comparison here. It went to this one, which is basically this. So this value I'm the referencing and I'm testing it. Uh, the well function. Okay, I think I'm gonna call it for the night.
for the night. Uh, there's something, it clearly there's something wrong. I still not seeing what it... What is different from zero? I think after the first iteration... Here is when it's assigning, and here is when it's saying, like, we succeeded. But... Here is when it is incrementing. But why is it doing this afterwards? And then, because it's the end of the while, and then, and then it jumps over here and goes over the process again. So it's doing. So here it increments, perfect. But here, when it references it, why is it using the that assignment? By the way. Oh man, this is killing me. Okay, so I think we did pretty good progress, more or less. Um, so let me figure out why... When it gets to this point, again, it fails. But anyways, I think it's a problem for another day. Uh, I'll, we'll need to sort out this one. This is an access violation, so he's trying to access a place in memory that doesn't exist, so we'll have to debug it a little bit better. See what is going on and hopefully figure, correct the bug. So. Anyways, thanks for watching and talk to you soon. Cheers, bye bye.